Welcome to the SOS Podcast. I'm your host, Tino Mtapati, and I believe one of the most important things you can do is sharing the journey as it unfolds. I believe you've got superhero-level talent within you for something, and I just want you to find the origin story, embrace it, and use it to make a difference. Hello, boys and girls, ladies and gents. Today, we've got an awesome guest in the house. The first guest of the SOS Podcast, Mr. Guidance Ganundu. Cadence is a social media artist with three plus years experience in the creative field. He's a leader and motivator, a UI and UX designer. And last but not least, he is a cultural activist. Cadence is here to talk to us about his origin story. He's going to talk to us about seminal moments in his past that set the tone for what he does today. Not only that, but he's also going to talk about the differences he noticed when he transferred from St. George's to, to St. John's Emerald Hill is going to touch a bit on the elitist thing that goes on between high schools in Harare. And he's going to talk about his long-term goal of changing the world's perception of Africa. So stick around and find out how exactly he intends to do that. I'm so happy to have you on the show, Guidance, and you know, just thank you for carving time out of your busy schedule uh, to be part of the show. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So, Guidance, before we get into, you know, the, the, the meat of the discussion, I guess the, the, the listeners want to know you, like, on an intimate level. Like, they want to feel like you're their friend is, you know, just like just like how I know you. So let's 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 start with the, you know, um, what's, what, what are your favorite lyrics? You know, probably if people know the type of music you're into, they can relate to you better. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a tough one. You know, as an artist, as a person that has always been involved with the arts, I've, I don't know, I've, I, I listen to all sorts of music, you know. I cannot say mm. I have a favorite. It's hard for me to say that I have a favorite genre or a favorite song uh, because I'm one of those people that has always been, you know, uh, been immersed in, in music. But one mm-hmm. thing that I can tell you is I listen to more gospel than anything. And um, particularly the song that I really like these days is by mm-hmm. a Zimbabwean artist. Her name is Janet Banyoa. Uh, I'm sure many people uh, probably... What was it? Janet Manua. Ah, uh, okay. Many people probably know her, or some people don't know her. I don't know. But her song called Ndimi, um, it's a song that has been inspiring me, a song that has been keeping me um, motivated. Wow. Especially when you're away from home, like 10,000 miles, you need um, songs that keep you going. And Ndimi is one of those songs that has kept me motivated and that has kept me afloat. Um, so the lyrics, um, I'm going to use Shauna. Um, yeah, you know, uh, you know uh, that <laughs> Okay. So the lyrics are, Munora Tizanzira, Pakaoma, Muna Vene Kanyika, Inerima, Muna Stimu Zira Moe, Akaneta, Makagara Muripo, Murimwari Wango, Ndimi, something like that. So, um, you know, it's basically saying that God is the way where there is no way, is the light when there is darkness mm. and is always there. He was always there and will always be. So it's it's a very powerful song and she, her music just gets to me. Um, you know that music that makes you want to cry? It's, it's that music yeah, that um, touches your heart. And so um, she's actually like my favorite gospel musician at this moment. Wow, that's incredible. Those lyrics are powerful. Oh, yeah. And, you know, a lot of people might not know, but not only Guidance, uh, is Guidance, he's not only, you know, the things that I mentioned in the introduction, the guy is really talented and he he's a singer. He's a man of many talents. So I guess, you know, the listeners... And myself are really itching to, you know, just hear you sing, man. You've got an incredible <laughs> voice. Just sing those lyrics, oh you know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did not turn up for this. 
<laughs> Zimbabwe's got talent. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I mean, if you're comfortable, of course, we would love to hear. I mean, okay. if you follow guidance on Facebook and Instagram, just check out his videos where he's singing in church. That guy will blow I, I, you I can, away. I can, sing, yeah. I can sing a part, but I don't know how it will come out. <laughs> no, give it a shot. Dude. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure it'll be good. I'm pretty sure it'll be good. If it's bad, you probably edit it out, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'll talk to the production team. <laughs> Ew, what's wrong with I can put on guy just auto tune it, okay? We don't want the you know him to lose, <laughs> you know, credibility. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. So, so yeah, it goes like this. Munorati zanzira paka oma munovene kanika inerima. Muno si mozira ngoyo paka yakarema Maka gara muri po muri mwari wangu wa Simi muri mwari wangu wa Dimi Yeah, something like that wow. <laughs> My voice, my voice wow. is a bit strange so <laughs> No, not at all that was incredible. You know, <laughs> studying, as you said, being so far from home, mm -hmm. these things are the things that, you know, just take you back and you start missing home. And when you're singing, I just miss the, the energy from back home, from Zim and being in, you know, because I go to New Life Covenant Church. Right. And you, you just took me, you put me in, into that, into that state that you've got an amazing voice. You've got an amazing voice. I don't know why you, you're trying to sell yourself short. You're trying to be humble, but man, put it out there, man. You, you've got a, an amazing voice. And how long have you been singing for, though? Um, <laughs> started off singing in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> like many of us, but many of us are still there in the shower. Long as is at such a graduate, we're like oh literally God. still singing in the shower. <laughs> so, uh, so I started off singing in the shower probably for most of my life. Then in 2016, mm. well, actually 2015, that's when I then went to St. George's, you know, St. George's College. And, uh, and that's when I sang in St. George's, sorry. That's when I sang at St. George's. Um, and I remember it was during mass practice. And then I went to the mm -hmm. podium, like, uh, this, this, uh, I think it was the music director. His name was Michael Bunduki. He, he was also working. I, I remember he, told, he asked if anyone would want to lead a song. And then at that time, it was just so unexpected. Then I went in front of the, the chapel. And this, wow. is, this is the chapel at, like, my stream mate. And uh, mm -hmm. also, yeah, it was. I think it was only my streaming. Then I sang. People were surprised. People were like, "What is that? Is that him?" Like many people didn't expect that. They were like, "Oh, you know, they probably thought I was going to sound like, like you know, like like something." Else. But I <laughs> you probably won't talk. You wouldn't sound like me when I try to sing. <laughs> <laughs> wow! But I went wow. There and um, so ever since that experience, I was like, you know what? Um, Maybe I should look into singing. And then when I transferred to St. John's Emerald Hill, I started helping out in the mass and the choir practice. I joined the choir. I was um, I also released like songs, uh, an album. Um, uh, 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 okay. Uh, for for the listeners, for the listeners, we're going to include a link to Guidance's <laughs> album in the description down below. Make sure you comment on your favorite song. Share. You didn't tell me. How, how do I not know this about you? Now, you know, I've just told the listeners that we're friends and I don't know this about you. Man, that, that's incredible. Yeah. How many songs do you have in the album? Um, there were about five or six. But to be honest with you, the songs that I like from there that I thought were mm -hmm. like professionally done or were done to perfection were about two songs because the rest, the rest didn't come out as well as I wanted them to come out because it was a rushed album. It was one of those albums where... Because um, I was leaving for America, and 
um, I had I had recorded with my friends, um, with with some of my friends. I think about what like a month before I left, and we we tried to rush it as much, but it was the production wasn't as you know in Zimbabwe how things you know things go like sometimes the production people rush and they don't edit mm-hmm. it well. So there are two songs mainly that I think are uh, up to standard. Like there's Grace and then there's a song called Holy. I also have links on my uh, on my YouTube page. I, I posted them on my YouTube page. So if anyone wants to listen to them, um, I'll give you know the, the link. And we'll be sure to include them. What's the name of the album? Uh, I think it was... Huh, you see, no, no. <laughs> I think it was Father in My Life I See, you know. I think wow. that, was song. That, mm. that, that was that was a song that I did, uh, and it became the, um, the album name, I guess. Yeah, I haven't, this was 2017, so my mind has since forgotten about it because right now, the next mm. thing is mainly at church, mainly at. Mm. Uh, Leading, leading worship because I I happen to lead worship, praise and worship at my church. Yeah, so it's it's wow. exciting. Yeah, that's incredible, man. And I'm looking forward to listening to that album. You know, I, I, part of me like like part of me wants to kill you actually because you <laughs> didn't tell me. Well, when I show you, dude, you're an artist in so many ways. That's why. That's one thing that I keep on discovering about myself. I can never limit myself to one thing. I'm always and you're always people. finding different avenues to express yourself. Huh? Exactly. You wow. Because when I was young, I used to because I, I went to the Salvation Army and I still go to the Salvation Army, um, mm-hmm. the church, and mm-hmm. I would play. I would play. Um, you know, like timbrels. I don't know if you've heard of them. I would play timbrels. I would play like. Um, oh, I'm familiar. I'll play, oh, I don't know what they're called in English, but we call them Washo. Ah, uh, Washo. Uh, for those who don't know, we will add a picture. Uh, links, Washo is an amazing instrument. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's really prominent in the gospel scene back home. Oh, yeah. So, mm. And also, I used to, even when I started with my art, I started off doing fine art, doing like traditional art, and then I moved into abstract art. And then from abstract art, that's when I came here, and then I moved into like illustration, then from illustration and then animation, and then web design, and then all these sorts of things. So I've I've seen that my I am I am not limited to one thing, and that's I think that's um, that's the thing with many artists we we are not limited to one specific, especially myself. That's a great thing. Yeah, that's an amazing thing because these countless ways to express yourself to reach a different type of audience with a different type of art form so why would you restrict yourself so that's that's great man yeah that's that's really great but now you know you really got into your origin story you kind of gave the the listeners a bit of a teaser you said when you're growing up when you're a child like you've always had this passion for music and like how would you describe your childhood like what influenced you know what sparked uh, the artists, you know, within you, like, yeah, just, just, just give us an idea. Like, how did the painting come about? The drawings, the, the abstract art. How did the music come about? Well, you did say that you started singing in church, but <laughs> could you like pinpoint one, you know, a specific time in your path, like, where you really? Like, okay, this is where it all began. Um, so, what can I say? Um, I remember we used to stay with this guy. His name is George Mungani. He's now in South Africa. Um, we used to stay with him. And I remember him, like, taking a paper and a pencil, drawing uh, Tom and Jerry characters, you know. And when I saw that, I was like, huh, oh, okay. This is interesting. Um, I've never seen anything like this. Like, so that's when my, my love for art started, you know. So I used to like doodle about creating images and just drawing and just enjoying myself. And um, you know, my my friends 
all this and they were like, okay, this child is into art, we see. Um, so growing up, you know, I managed, I changed so many schools, you know, I, I mm-hmm. changed, um, even in kindergarten, I changed. <laughs> I, I, I shifted from one school to another. Uh, mm. then but it, was it because you're looking for like uh, an art program or what was the reason for you, you know, switching so much? Um, it wasn't really about an art program. It was probably mm. because of like uh, location and also like quality. Because that's, Ah, okay, my parents okay. always try to, to like have quality education for for us as siblings, as you know, my mm. brothers and stuff. I'll go into that a later big, on. A big, a big shout out to Mama and Papa Gnundu, <laughs> my Tabasa. <laughs> you you raised such an artist and an incredible person. That's that's shout out to them and for for doing the most. And oh, yeah. shout out to any parent that does that. And uh, that's 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 awesome. So yeah, so mm. I then went from, um, you know, from Avondale to Conway College to Hartman House. And then mm. when I went at Hartman House, that's when I was able to focus mainly on my art side because I felt like Hartman House had a, had a, had a, had a class for art and then mm. a teacher who was in charge of you know, of making sure that we focused our minds and, you know, art was treated as a subject and not just as something that we did for fun, you know. Uh, Even though for me, Mm -hmm. it was something that I loved. So each time, each time I went to class or each time I went to school, I would be really interested in the art scene. You know, like the the art classes where where I was able to um, Mm -hmm. express myself and fully um, showcase my talent, you know. So I was mm-hmm. always genuinely into art. Um, I remember grade four, grade five, uh, sixth grade, seventh grade, up to until now, you know, I've always into drawing. I was always into drawing. Um, mm-hmm. I entered my work for Allied Art uh, several times, you know, um, and You've actually been fe- featured in the newspaper back home. Oh yeah, the Sunday Mail. I remember seeing. Yeah, that was in 2016, actually, when I got mm. my work featured in the newspaper. Um, so you know, um, they wanted artwork for the art team, and uh, so I just, I just sent my artwork. I was like, okay, uh, I see that you want artwork, and um, tell me if this is good. Um, so the person got my art, and then he he was really impressed. And then he put it under the title when it, when um, when the talent is utilized. That was the title. That was the heading of the whole. Uh, and he wrote like this whole, you know, this whole like uh, how to go on it. And then it featured four of my artwork artworks, and uh, it, was, it was very. It was very humbling. It was very exciting because I've never had my work featured, you know, on a large scale. I've I've had like my my written work featured in the newspaper because I I won cover to cover when I was in grade seven. Um, but it's you know cover to cover. cover. For those who don't know, do you mind explaining what that is? Cover to cover. Cover to cover is a writing competition. In mm, okay. They, um, you write. They give you. It's a short story writing competition. So I managed to to write a story mm. um, where I was talking about the farm. You know, it's unfortunate that I really don't have the documents with me right now. You know, since, ah, since I'm I, was, I was literally <laughs> just that was going to be the like next question. I was going to say I want pictures to all this. We want to feature it. We want to show people. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I I hopefully. Um, We'll be able to access them soon, um, you know. That's one yeah, thing. That's one thing that I need to get better at documentation. I feel like I haven't been documenting most of my my stuff, but yeah, um, I must say the cover to cover competition and also like National Allied Arts and I I think St. Hartman House was very good at doing that. Like it was very uh, so, so they really nurtured your talent. They really nurtured us. Even we used to go for poetry every. 
every year we used to participate in the National Allied Arts um, acting, uh, you know, drama, um, poetry, and we used to. It was like it was like necessary. Everyone was forced to do it. You know, it's like you're forced to to recite poems and to memorize and to go out. And we would do it as a class. Like every class would would ha- would like get poems to recite, and then they would enter National Allied Arts. And then uh, it was it was just amazing, you know. Like Hartman House really groomed us. It really pushed us towards that whole actual like art scene. They made us really well-rounded people. And I guess that's one thing that I can that I can thank the Hartman House and the St. George's system for. Like that they were able to instill, you know, that um, that courage and they were able to instill that confidence from an early age you know Uh, and uh, kudos to those institutions for you know really valuing the and recognizing the importance of art and they've literally created the next wave of artists and you are a prime example so yeah kudos to the institutions if there's anyone from hartman house or um, George's, you said, right? Mm-hmm. Comment in the comment section. To tell us if you were, you know, part of this. But now back to your story, man, because I'm just so inspired and I just love listening to it. I, I can can you describe to me like how you felt, like when your article was featured in the paper and your your artwork was featured. Uh, also in the newspaper, like how did that feel? Like as a kid, how old were you then? And how did, like, could you describe how you felt? Mm, I can say that... Teachers must have been proud though. Like, I, was, really proud. I was really happy, you know. Um, mm. I was really happy. Uh, 2016, 2017 were probably mm. like my greatest years in, in high school. Because mm. a lot of, of great things were happening, you know. Uh, that's the same time when junior council was happening. Uh, that's the same Actually, where we met, huh? <laughs> when we met, you know, that's the same yeah. time when I was, um, you know, I was like becoming um, this leader of this, you know, I don't know, leader of a school with so many students, close to 650 students, and just having so many things that were going on, so many positive things, mm. you know, to even getting scholarships coming to America and it was it was those two years were so <laughs> quick and uh, the achievement rate mm. was just <laughs> I don't even want to, to you know it, it was just it was a uh, blessings on blessings it, like, it was just you. coming in you know blessings on top of blessings like, yeah blessings on top of blessings that, that that's amazing you know also when you say coming to America <laughs> I kind of, I like I immediately thought of that movie. The movie, yeah. Uh, yeah, coming to America and yeah, the... <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I you know I I'm, I really want to sing the, the the theme song can't you see but I know I can't sing it. I don't want to spoil this for the listeners. But that's amazing, got it. But at the like and during this when everything was happening, all these great things, were there any times where you faced any setbacks or any failures or disappointments or was it like you know, smooth sailing throughout those two years, 2016 and 17? Um, if anyone says that their life is smooth sailing, <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> they've got one, you know, hell of a life. I don't even want to say that. They're, they, like, they're lying. They should get off their high horse. <laughs> I don't know, you know, because we yeah. all have obstacles that we face. And mm. um, there are so many things. I don't know the exact words to these quotes and to these to these things that talk about like um, you will not know how much you can hold unless you've been through a lot of trouble. Mm. You know, I've been through a lot of trouble growing up. Um, you know, uh, you know, especially the person who I am um, at St. George's at Altman House. Um, in general, in life, life in general, I've faced a lot of different things, from bullying, uh, from name calling, to uh, people saying stuff that they thought was 
I don't know. People people thought it was okay to say some of these things, but I really now when I think of it, I'm like, and all the experience that I've had, um, you know, going to St. John's and then coming to America, you know, learning with the people from diverse backgrounds, I have noticed that what we used to do in high school, what we used to say about each other, the way we were so um, disconnected from each other, the way we had clicks, the way we um, just found it, you know, you know, we always we always criticized each other. Um, and yeah, that's that. terrible, and it's and it's it's sad that this stuff happens in high school. Oh, yeah. you know? It wasn't criticizing for the good. You know, there's that criticism that is great, right? Criticism that is great to build constructive criticism. Constructive yeah, criticism. But this criticism wasn't constructive. Criticism. It was criticism to tear you down, name calling like, "Oh, you're so gouache," you know, like this whole term of yeah. Hey, this, this gouache one this was. Gouache I remember one. when I yeah. came came back to Zim to do my A levels. Yeah, gouache. Hey, this gouache, gouache, gouache. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it was for a time it was one of the most popular words and in fact no, if I, it was for the wrong reasons even because people used it to tear other people down or just you know demean or belittle someone or something and wasn't good yeah but it was, I, it was such a childish mm, thing to do you know mm. yeah. so it was like that's just how I felt like you know I had conversations recently with uh, many people, like close friends, and they were telling me, you know what, uh, we are sorry for, you know, if we contributed to that bullying, or, um, you know, many people thought you weren't going to be successful, or people, uh, like, uh, didn't think you were going to make it, or whatever, right? But I was like, you don't determine that. No one determines yeah. that. It's only no one does. determines anyone's success. And the, the weird sure. thing was, I was extremely nice to everyone. You know, when you have that extremely nice person, who is willing? And you're just taking mm-hmm. everything, yeah. Exactly. I was, I was willing. I, I would share my my breakfast. I would share my lunch. You know, you know how people like share their lunch. Yeah. I wasn't but just to give, thing. just ju- just to give the listeners, uh, uh, you know, some context. And could you please go deeper into the backstory? Because you mentioned bullying, but what exactly happened was was they, because you meant you also mentioned that. Uh, they thought that you weren't going to be successful. So all these things that were happening in your school, around you, and to you, did they contribute to making you the person you are today? Was it like really a transformative time in in high school? Um, Well... What really happened, yeah? If you don't mind. Well, to be honest with you, if one person... You know, many people can take it differently. Um, I'm very grateful and lucky that I've always had that I don't care kind of like personality. Mm-hmm. You know, like I don't care. You know, if you're going to say, you're going to call me this name, you're going to call me this derogatory name, you're going to mm-hmm. say all these things about me. But at the end of the day, I'm just going, I'm going to continue being nice. I'm just going to continue being God-fearing. I'm going to continue being humble. That's just who I am. I'm not going to return the same energy that you give me. You know, I'm going to continue just being mm-hmm. the good person that I am, you know, that sort of thing. But if it was other people, other people would have crumbled and would have, like, believed it that they were that person, mm-hmm. you know? So in terms of making me who I am, um, you know, I can say that it didn't. I didn't let it get to me. You know, I try my mm-hmm. best to keep up this cover um, and just continue being myself. And um, I just try my best to ignore what was going on, mm-hmm. you know, um, and just just being called, like, to be, to be called names because of the people that you hang out with, you know, like, um, mm-hmm. there was just so much going on at, at, at all these institutions. And it's unfortunate, like, that we lost a lot of time that we could have used to really get close and get to know each other, you know? Yeah, um, and even support each other. Exactly. Who knows? It, you'd be at a totally different level now. Well, in fact, not you, but them, because they could have, you know, at the time learned so much from you and oh, yeah. the way you do things. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, right now I do have a lot of people that are coming back to me telling me, oh, you know, like you're mm. an inspiration to us. Like, uh, mm. you've got all these people coming back telling me all these stories. Like, you know, I'm sorry if I ever contributed anything, um, and you know, just just apologizing and just telling me how you know inspired they are. Like, I was able to mm. to fight through it, and I was able to get to the stage that I'm at and I'm not I'm still fighting for my life right now. I'm still working hard I'm still trying to, to make sure that I um, I get to the top I'm still in I'm still on that journey I'm, I'm not saying that I'm successful I'm not successful I'm just a student I'm still on that journey and I'm still exploring I'm still discovering myself I'm still trying to to you know to, to know where exactly um, I am at in terms of this entertainment industry, in terms of this like um, tech industry. That's who I am. I'm just trying to discover myself. But I'm just saying, in terms of um, mm -hmm. you know, like people, people are actually noticing it now. People are actually reflecting on it and saying, okay, so what we did back then wasn't right. What we they finally grew up. You know, it's it's growing up, and it's unfortunate for me because I left. I left an O level, you know. I, I left when I finished my O levels, and mm -hmm. I didn't get to see this whole side of like people uh, bonding or people um, becoming close, you know. Because I feel like that happened mm -hmm. in the last six and after six, where people started after you close, left. After I left, but you know, so it's it's interesting. I do talk to a lot of things, guys. Right? They are, they are my brothers, you know. That that's just the thing. Mm -hmm. They are my brothers, and. Uh, just like in families, you're five, you've got all those things, you've got, you know, but at the end of the yeah. day, you end up like getting close, you end up bonding. Um, mm. I do have, I do have a lot of like close friends from St. George's that, that I actually call my brother. But it's... it's, it's, it's I, I guess that I, I'm learning from, I learn a lot from you <laughs> every time we can, I just, you know, hear you speak. It's just so, you know, it's enlightening because... You're so wise. You give such sage advice at this age where most of us, um, just going back to what you said earlier about, you know, you didn't let it get to you. Mm -hmm. You just still be this amazing, great person, kind person. But, you know, I guess if I was in your shoes at that time, I would re retaliate, you know. And it's, it's not a good thing. And I'm just so impressed with how you handled that situation. No, oh, yeah. You know, in high school, man. Got so much respect for you, man. That's. Oh, yeah. I guess in high school, people yeah. will still be immature and, you know, they feel like the yeah. world revolves around them. And mm -hmm. they just think, oh, I'm at this school, so I'll be at mm -hmm. this school forever. Or oh, I'll be. My life is set because I'm in this bubble that I'm in. Whereas life is life, life teaches you lessons. The moment you leave a specific mm. place and go to another place and, um, you know, the moment you experience different things and that, when you're away from your parents, when you're away from that strong support system, that's when you realize that, oh, it's important to make friends with everyone. It's important to... You know, to build relationships and to nurture them, and yeah. Network, because you might need that person in the future, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. So I think so true. I think that's just how it is, you know. Like there's a lot of bullying. Mm. There's a lot of a lot of things that happen on in high schools, and you know, it's, that's just how it is, mm. especially at old boys. Because yeah. growing up, yeah. it's, you know, it's a boys' school, so that's what happens. Yeah. But at the end of the day, um, coming to think of it, like, is it really necessary? Like, what are we doing? Uh, yeah. You know, like we we lose so many years of getting to know each other, of getting to to form those bonds, you know. Um, just because you said it to, yeah. you know, act like a jerk and... Or, or just because you want to look cool. Follow like, the crowd and look cool, yeah. Yeah, we just want to follow the crowd and look cool. Mm. Or what am I going to do? I'm going to um, go and discriminate this other person, you know, mm. just because um, the squad doesn't like them. So if the squad doesn't like them, then the whole stream doesn't like them. So I'm, we're just going to... To like build up and say stuff, so that I come out like, as if I'm cool. And um, mm -hmm. one thing that I can say, even though it didn't affect me as much, I can I can um, safely say that there were some times when I really 
did feel insecure, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, these people are calling me these names and um, mm-hmm. what's happening? And you always kept wondering. But how how, how did you deal with that self doubt, that fear, that insecurity? Like, how did you deal with it at the time? Of course. As you said, you didn't let it get to you yeah. uh, like completely, but how did you really deal with it and get out of that you know, um, you know way of thinking and like just stopping yourself from feeling that way? Well, it's I don't know getting out of it it was it was it was hard, I must tell you like because um, mm. you would see me acting and uh, people would make fun of you when you're on the stage and you're on the stage and people are making fun of you and you kind of have to recover yourself. And my parents, and the thing is my mom, I remember, I remember this very day I, I was acting on stage and I was a priest. And then I, I said something, you know, I said something in a specific way, you know, it was very animated and it was, it was extremely mm-hmm. fun. And, and then people reacted when we are, we are in the theater, people reacted. And my mom, my mom and my sister were there. You know, my mom and sister, they were, they were surprised, they were shocked. They were like, oh, this is all you people, like, act cool. And I'm like, well, you know, that's just how people are. You know, people can be super immature, and that's just how it happens. Yeah. Um, and um, so sometimes I'll feel insecure, and I'll feel like, okay, so I'm going out in public. Should I do this? Um, you know, what would people say about me? Uh if I post this photo, what would people say about me? Or like how, you know, you, you start thinking, you start having that mentality of yourself, like, oh, this person mm. doesn't like me or this person, this that, because you have, you have had all the stuff that has been happening mm. to you. Um, and I feel like even with me right now, the person that I am today, um, sometimes my friends have told me, like my friends here in, in California and, my close friends from California and all other all, all other places, they told me that sometimes I do take time to um, to allow a person to I don't know to get close to people because I, I started investing myself in academics. I started investing myself in like um, you know getting my things done instead of like letting myself build relations with other people because I mm-hmm. faced so much betrayal, so much. Um, Oh, okay. So you kind of so when you left uh, for the states, mm-hmm. that's it, I guess that's probably one of the ways you dealt with it. Just immersing yourself in your work, in your craft, that you'd shut everybody else oh, yeah. out, right? Oh yeah. But this was mm-hmm. before um, I even came to the states because mm-hmm. this all this that I'm talking about happened in like my four years, my first four years of high school. When I did transfer mm-hmm. to another institution, uh, a lot of positive things happened. Um, that's when I was telling you, like, the newspaper, Harry Junior Council, publications officer, you know, running for mayor. Uh, even though I didn't get the mayor position, I lost that mayor position by five five votes. <laughs> Just a mere five votes. You know, if they hadn't kicked, if they hadn't kicked me out... <laughs> I would have rigged those elections because I cannot yeah, think of yeah. anyone more deserving than you. I, I'm serious. I would have rigged those elections yeah, because yeah. you were more deserving of that post. And I, I don't know really what goes on. I'm not trying to throw shade, but I remember, like, I, I'm not going to mention names, but when I got kicked out unfairly from yeah. junior council and I had a valid reason, but I was still kicked out. I went back, uh, I was invited back, and I tried to get back in. And I was told that I had to talk to the mayor. And I hadn't spoken to this guy. I didn't know him. And he was not the most welcoming individual. He was very, you know, I know, I, I guess nobody's immune to hubris, but that guy was just, like, really closed off. I'm like, I'm here... I got kicked out unfairly, but I was told to talk to you. You should be the first to, you know, really hear me out. But he treated me as if, you know, I was beneath him. And I guess that's also one of the things that stopped me. But, you know, that that doesn't matter. But all I'm saying is, man, you deserved to be mayor. And they just made a wrong decision. (laughs) 
they oh. did made a wrong this. Like, I don't want to get emo or upset about it. Everything happens like, for yeah. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, ab- ab- everything happens for sure. It definitely happens for a reason. Yeah, so uh, mm. that's just how it was. So um, I must say, um, so yeah, I lost the five votes then. That's when I became uh, the deputy head boy of St. John's on Mount Hill. And, uh, mm. You know, just, I, I had a lot of positive things happening. Um, accolades on accolades. Accolades on accolades. Uh, 20, yeah. 2017. So, yeah, um, I guess that was my For turning sure. point because I was like, okay, you know. Trophies. I'm in this different supportive environment um, at this place where um, mm. people appreciate me more, where people mm. care more, I must mm. say. I'm, I'm at this institution where, and actually treat you like another human exactly. being exactly i'm at this institution where and that was the difference that i actually saw when i went when i transferred and i probably guess um it's also because it's a mixed school you know you've got mm-hmm. boys and girls so um i guess having those like you know having boys and girls also help i mean many people say that it, it makes a school soft that's what many people say <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, like many people are against the whole thing, which is with girls thing now. Um, but I don't know. For me, I'm like, it kind of makes things a little bit interesting. I don't feel like it would change a lot of things. Uh, mm. So having girls around me at St. John's and Road Hill, it, it really did help me in terms of like, um, not only girls, but the, the people that were there. It was a caring environment. Mm. It was an environment where people would look out for each other, you know, where people mm-hmm. would care about each other. And um, people... Yeah. You're uh, so right uh, about, not it, about it not being a bad thing. It's, it's, it's a great thing. And shout out to all the women out there. Yeah. Loving, caring, kind. Yeah. It was... It was Again, a, I, yeah. A totally different environment, I must say. Totally different mm. environment. And I'm just happy you finally went to a place where you were nurtured and, you know, celebrated. And it really, it, you, you deserved it, bro. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad all these things were happening. I guess you had to go through a little something for this thing to happen. Hello? Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I can hear you. Oh, sorry. I thought I lost connection on probably edit this part out <laughs> but yeah uh, like I was saying I I really wanted to know at the time when you were you know like you switched schools and you know you were happy you were happier there right the environment was different the people were kind they were more caring they were more accommodating yeah um mm. Switching things was was amazing, you know. Mm. I mean, it's it's a very. Did you also find yourself immersing yourself in like your work and blocking other people out, or this time you're more open and you trusted people more? Um, yeah, I was more open. Um, Mm. you know, I was was more open, but of course, I was I was used to you know disappointments and disappointments, disappointments. But I just kept Uh being nice, you know. When I left Sands, um. I had various people telling me, oh, you know, he talks about saying, saying John's Emerald Hill as if it's John's Green Blazer. You know, I had, I had so mm-hmm. many people saying, oh, he moved to St. John's. You know, like many, many people were like, huh, this guy, is, is this guy like going to be successful? Is this guy going to, you, you know, like, oh, he just, he went to that mm-hmm. school. Like, what's that school? You know, you, you, so you've got so many people that were saying stuff about like me moving and you've got some parents that were even wide, like my mom's friends, uh, mm-hmm. that have kids at St. George's, they were even wide, like, how I was going to perform at St. John's and Mount Hill. They were afraid of, like, oh, interesting. What, what I, I didn't knew that. You know? That's very interesting because I didn't know that the whole thing with, you know, A-list schools in Zim was like that. Like, there was that much rivalry or, you know, oh. people thought certain schools were better than other schools, even parents getting worried for your friend's kids yeah, that i did not know that i, I probably yeah. wasn't paying attention to it at the time when i came back 
But I knew there was some type of elitist thing going on, but I didn't pay attention to it that much. Well, so it's just shocking to hear what you're telling me right now. Well, it's interesting. It's also. There, there, there is an elitist thing, like, you know, where, mm. and I think uh, getting into organizations like um, Harry Junior Council, we were mm. able to, you know, those organizations are able to like mix everyone from different backgrounds. And um, they they help a lot, I must say. Mm, yeah. They equalize everyone. Exactly. They equalize. Kind of stripped away, and stripped away that that whole you know feeling of and security and class thing. Yeah. So that's one thing that we also need to work on. Yes, obviously, these schools that you pay a lot of money are great. You know, they mm. make you ex- you know they expose you to all these other things, right? But don't use it as a platform to then discriminate another school. Because when you then leave that school, you are the same as that person, you know, who went to a lower grade school or whatever you call it, a class class B school if you want. Mm-hmm. You'll be the same, you'll be on the same position. You are now you now have to fight. You know, you now have to go to university, mm-hmm. you now have to fight for connection. Obviously you're connected yeah. to these people that are at top institutions, right? But still you still need to work harder. You still need to do a lot of things, right? University, You're not going to go to the same university. <laughs> same university, university. Yeah. And you know, there are so many stories of people that go to these like um, so-called gwash schools. You know, mm-hmm. that actually end up going to universities that are ex- on overseas. Known, you know, and Ivy League. Even. Exactly. I know so many people yeah. that are at Ivy League universities. That did not go to, uh, mm. you know, to like group A schools. I know so many, mm. so many close friends of mine, you know, that that are at at top institutions, you know, even mm. in South Africa oh. and use at UCT and all these other big schools that did not go to private schools, but because their parents were saving money for them to go to university, they, mm. they made them go to like cheaper options for high school, and they did get the same education, and now they are getting. You know, top notch education yeah, even better, yeah. <laughs> in South Africa and all these other 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 countries. So as a result, it, I don't know what it is, but I just feel like this whole culture of like, um, you know, looking at other schools as lesser, being all elitist elite, elite and stuff. I think it. I think it still persists though on social media. I mean, because obviously it does. Because we, to an extent, it does. I think I've kind of noticed it. Yeah, it, it does because you've got influencers, you've got all these people, you know. Uh, as I said, I don't have a problem with people that go to these schools. I went to these schools. I, I was a product of these schools. I went to Bob and Austin and I went to mm. school, right? Yeah, it's definitely not about the school. It's, it's more about the individual and the character because exactly. you're, like, as you, like, look, you're the perfect example where you went to these schools, but you ended up being a completely different person uh, oh. in all like in a good way in a really good way in a positive way oh, yeah so i think it's really more of a character thing and uh, i hope that it's it's something that can you know be torn down and completely destroyed because it's pointless it is especially right now mm-hmm. as i'm saying like right now with the whole economic problem going on in Zimbabwe yeah all these other things that are happening and i feel like it kind of does unite us now, you know, because we are like, okay, I'm struggling, you know. And I feel like many people get to notice it when they actually go to university that, you know, what I was calling gouache is my culture. And I now need to know it because you have so many people asking you questions. Oh, so what's your language? And then you're like, Shana. And then they ask you to say something and you cannot even say a single word in Shana. Or they ask you, like, what are your cultural traits? And you don't even know. You don't even know. Like you can't yeah. even articulate it. Exactly. That yeah. moment we were talking about fungat. Ah, but then, and it's so sad. Um, because <laughs> oh. uh, I, I, I've also been like in that position where. So, tell me more. Or what's the trade? Something interesting, and exactly. then you sit there and you realize, ah, oh, I actually do not know. Exactly. You know. And. <sighs> It's so it, it's 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 heartbreaking. <laughs> it's something that I'm working on fixing right now. Oh yeah, so because I want to represent the country. Yeah, so 
you know, even I remember there was a time when people wouldn't even listen to like uh, the likes of Davido and the likes of those people. People were focusing so much on American music. And then when Davido started, you know, featuring on mm-hmm. American musicians and then all of a sudden people are now listening to Davido and then people started listening to South African music and then people started listening to, to Zim Danzo. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. You know, like usually people mm-hmm. have locked off this, they put this block and we're saying, okay, we're not going to listen to this. And now people are now opening their minds. Now this word, you are a famoyo, you know. And many people yeah, are like, oh, I can learn Shona from this. At least, like, I can, I can understand uh, that whole greater <laughs> culture, that whole culture that is there. But I, it wasn't something that was appreciated. It wasn't something that was really looked at as being cool back then. Mm-hmm. People would like say stuff about it. So it's. It's, it's very exciting. It, you know, this whole shift, mm. I think it's for the positive, but, mm. you know, I still feel like people should be able to not put that wall, you know. Even in America, there are rich people, right? There are poor mm. people. You've got people that go to, like, private high schools. You've got people that go to, like, no more. But yeah. you would never hear of any situations where people are like, oh, I'm better than this person. No, you... Especially where, where I'm at in California, I've never really um, seen that whole sort of like discrimination, like if you're poor or if you're not poor, like I've never seen people like discriminating each other. People are like super open, you know. Um, it's actually a rotten mentality to have and I'm, a, I'm ashamed, like I'm, a, I'm ashamed of it. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to call it like it is. Back home in Zim with this whole school thing and the way people act, it's it's a rotten mm. attitude to have and a rotten mentality. And it sucks that you have to, you know, America or any other part. In fact, let's just, because let's say America, because American en- entertainment dominates. You have, like, you're literally waiting for America to tell you something is cool in your own culture and for you exactly. to accept that it's cool. Exactly. And that's so sad. I'm always talking about this. I'm always posting about it. You know, mm. uh, how African-Americans are trying to understand where they came from. They are trying to understand their cultural norms. They're trying to understand who they are. Connect with the motherland. Exactly. <laughs> and then you've got us Africans Throwing it trying out to of be. the bag, throwing it out like you know into the Bruh, literally and then, and then trying like, to avoid everything that makes us African, and now try to it's like African American. So there's like this whole huge gap in between, and we're like mm, not eating, you know. Because you really you tried so hard to extricate yourself from your Africanness exactly. because you thought it was gouache, quote unquote, exactly. and it's so bad. And, uh, you know, it's so interesting that you've got this perspective and it's one of the many things I respect you for. Many people, many people agree with you yeah. right now. Many people agree with you. And it's true, yeah. It's true. But yeah. you, I guess you had this perspective for a long time and you've been a deep, think, a deep thinker about this whole, uh, like, issue surrounding this for a very long time. So I'm starting to think, th- is this what really led uh, into you being a culture, culture. cultural activist. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is what, in, you know, set you down that path of, you know, being a cultural activist, this, you know, subject matter. Yes, yes. You've got, you, you know, when you look at people like Tanase Gambura, Tanase Gambura is a perfect example to you. Uh, I love Tanase. Tanase, if you're going to listen to it, we love you. We respect the work that you're doing. And we can't ha- wait to have you on the show. Oh yeah, she is. Yeah, she's amazing. She is. Mm. She, you know, she's one of those people that I really do respect. You know, the, mm. there are very few people, you know, um, that are like her. You know, because she would go to our junior council and she would interact with everyone the same. Yeah, that, you know, that tendency was amazing. Speak, you know, like, Donna and try, just try to, like, be there, you know, with people. She wasn't mm. a snob, she wasn't, she, she's not, like, one of those people. She she knows that she's African. And she, she, was a, she was a people person. I remember, I, the first time I interacted with Tanati, I think we were having some, some march and she was but we we're, we're having a march. Which one? The Make a HR friendly one? The one that I, I was I was in charge of organizing? 
<laughs> I think so. With all the like guidance, you literally shut down the city and we were marching. Yeah. Fun, and man. I yeah, that was fun, man. Kudos to you. That was amazing. Oh yeah. Major props. Uh so I met Tanate at I think uh, just before we went out to the streets, onto the streets, and everyone was preparing the banners and stuff. That's where I met Tanate. And I spoke to her, and she was so cool. Because maybe at the time I wasn't thinking about it so much because I was fresh out of Botswana and I I couldn't really wrap my head, head around this whole elitist thing. But she spoke to me. And, you know, we hit it off immediately. She was so cool. I told her initial, she, she, like you said, she was not a snob. She was such oh, yeah. a very... Yeah. She, she was so down to earth and so relatable. Yeah. And... I respect her so much for that, and we respect you, Tanate, for what you're doing now. Oh yeah, I, you know, she's, mm. you know, you always have something from her that is Af- Afrocentric. You know? mm. You've got exactly. You've got even the way she dresses; she's like super into like that whole African vibe. At the, what she's studying, you know, poetry and everything about her is like African. Cultural, cultural and, and afros right now she was, yeah. she was working on this whole netflix thing where she was putting out movies and inviting people you know like let's educating people yeah, about uh, let's, let's, I really, let's support african culture let's support african uh movies producers and, and stuff like that so just seeing tanate with what she was doing um also inspired me because i was like you know what we don't have much media out there and also experiencing here in, in you know, being in America for, for three years plus, you know, has also mm-hmm. helped me see that, you know, what people are hungry for African content. We push it away. Mm-hmm. You, have you seen, have you seen the, the, the TikTok challenges that are there, like with, with African music and you've got people doing Guara Guara, you've got people doing all these, mm-hmm. all these dances and stuff. There, there's this popular song, yeah, yeah, my outfit changed. What was it called, man? Don't uh, rush, don't rush. Don't, don't rush, exactly. Even even that one is also like becoming popular, you know, it's got mm. all American acting doing, you know, doing all mm. of that. African African uh, culture has been, you know, the forefront for a long time and it's just one of those um, things that we've been pushing, you know, pushing back, but Right now, mm. people are into it, and people really want to know the root, especially African Americans. Mm. They want to know the root of where they came from. They want to know, like, um, you know, who are they? Mm. What I've got so many people that want to go back to Zimbabwe with me to visit. You know, like, oh, we want to see Zimbabwe. We want to see wow. what makes Zimbabwe what it is. Because mm. you've got the media that distorts the image, right? And then. It's also we are told so true. Americans, so true. they're told in African Americans, you know, they are lazy, they want to be involved in gangs, they do this because they want to. But in actual if, case, yeah, they don't media has got a stuff. funny way of trying to sow discord amongst people. Like they make you hate mm-hmm. a certain group of people and with not accurate information. It's totally inaccurate. They're just trying to sow, you know, hatred between people. And when you consume media, I guess it's definitely something we we need to start being careful about. And we really need to bring up more people, uh, not bring up, sorry, to support and, you know, just promote more people like yourself and Tanate. You know, after this conversation, you just shed more light on uh, to the whole topic. And I'm starting to think about it. I really need to reach out to Tanate and we really need to, to do something about it. You know, as a league of superheroes, we need to put Africa on the map. Oh, yeah. Oh, again. yeah. You know, mm. I feel like every time I'm doing something, I'm representing Zimbabwe and Africa. Uh, mm. that I, I see myself doing a lot more in terms of... Mm documentation and like a lot more of like advocacy you know cultural advocacy and african activism you know try and just put it out there in the world and um yeah so mm. that's just who i am uh, my long-term goal i don't know if i told you this my long-term goal is to be international and wow yeah, that's where i want to like probably do a lot more of like 
Uh, so in in the realm of being a cultural activist, this is your vision. This is where you see yourself uh, yeah. in the future. In the future. If not, you next know, Being part of the UN. Who exactly do you want to be uh, in the UN, in, like in your vision? I'm so curious. Um, I want to be, I don't want, so I don't want to be a politician as such, right? But I want to, to be most likely uh, focused on... Um, focused on the media side of the United Nations. Mm-hmm. So right now, most of the things mm-hmm. that I'm doing are media-related. Right? But what I want to end up ideally doing is to work in the media department of the United Nations so that we, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I give perspective. Because that's one thing. Because it, you, you might only see that Africans are always portrayed as poor. I mean, they are poor people you know, in many places. But yeah, you know, yeah, all over the world, we never see we never see the positive side of Africa. About, we never see yeah. the, the positive impact of Africa. So that's one of the things that I want to target, you know, in the United Nations. That okay, yeah. So when we're showing this side of Africa, we have to do it in a way mm-hmm. that doesn't make it like demonize or make it like give this image. Um, of Africa as being like extremely poor and Africans, you know, as smelly and dirty and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. we saw Africans, you know, for mm-hmm. who they are. So that's that's where ideally I plan to go with this whole cultural advocacy. But I see, as I told you, I see myself uh, first in so many things, even growing up. Mm-hmm. Well. Yeah, this 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 was so powerful, and I'm glad you shared this. <laughs> And this is a side of you that I never knew. I mean, I know when you post on social media and we talk about it, but I'm just so glad that you went in depth oh, yeah. on the subject. And that's, that's, that's amazing. I think the last question is just, um, I guess, like right now, what are you using to fuel all these endeavors and things that you want to embark on what's like your drive so my family is my drive um mm. my family will always be at the root of my drive especially my mom and my dad um mm. those two have sacrificed a lot um you know even for me to go to schools like st george's up my house my mm. parents really um especially my dad, my dad invested so much money and is still investing so much money and it's it's insane mm-hmm. how selfless and caring he is so when, with a dad like that who is always investing all his money into you you kind of feel so you know it, it, just, it just touches me a lot because i've never I, I i know many parents i know many people will say that it's a parent's duty to do so but mm-hmm. trust me if you have a father that will take risks for you, a father mm-hmm. that will make sure that you are satisfied. Though always, you know, even though I'm here away and I'm working and I'm trying, I, I'm always able to produce. Like I'm always able to count on your dad. Um, no, I'm always able to like um, make make money to sustain myself and stuff. But they will mm-hmm. try and send some. You know, like especially even though with the economy in Zimbabwe the way it is, they'll always try and send stuff to make sure that I'm okay. Um, you know, my dad, my dad and my mom, you know, they are just at the root core mm-hmm. of everything. A lot of and love and respect going out to Mr. and Mrs. Kunundu. Oh yeah. So yeah. those those are my motivation. I think those are my yeah. greatest motivation. Those are like mm-hmm. okay. Uh, I have to make sure, you know, that I get straight yeah. A's. I have to make sure that I get a scholarship. Mm. I have to make sure that I get into the school because mm. if I don't get into that school, I feel guilty. You know, I feel like mm. my parents are investing so much. My parents are investing. I... My parents believe in me so much, you know. So why mm. would I let them down? I've got this whole thing to do for them. Mm. Well. I know without a doubt that you are making your parents proud with all the things that you have achieved 
And this is your story as it unfolds, the journey of you becoming the person that you are meant to be, the hero that you're meant to be. And it's just so exciting to be, you know, your friend and such an honor that, you know, I, I know you as a person. I know you at an intimate level and I'm glad to be part of your journey. And it's, it's just so amazing. And your parents are proud. Don't worry. Your parents for sure are proud. I don't know if your parents are on social media, but they will come. I hope they comment <laughs> and mm-hmm. they will definitely confirm what I'm saying. Like, yep. Yeah. We're proud of that boy. Oh, probably. And yeah, oh, probably. everything, yeah, everything that did happen with the whole school and the bullying, it's, it's actually, it's literally set the tone for what you want to be and what you want to achieve because without going through this whole elitist thing or being the whole cultural aspect of things when you travel, none of that would have come about if you hadn't gone through what you've gone through. And I just want to thank you for sharing. No problem. Thank you, Guidance. Thank you so much. I loved, you know, I love our conversations and I loved having you on the show. So could you tell people where they can find you on social media? So uh, on social media, it's Gun the Bird uh, official. Mm. Um, yeah, Gun the Bird official. All right. And I do have an art page that I haven't posted mm. in a long time. Uh, it's Gun the Designer. So it's mm. it's G U N Z underscore then E then underscore three R D. And then wow. I'm just going again. Wow. Awesome. It's a super complicated, <laughs> super complicated. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll link it down in the description just in case people forget. Perfect. And uh, if you found something useful uh, from this episode, or if you found something that touched you, inspired you, something that you learned, please share, tag the myself, guidance, the pay, the social media pages and just you know share with us engage with us tell you tell us what you learned tell us what you heard we really want to hear from you thank you so much and cut thank you so much again guys for tuning in i appreciate you guys immensely and again please help this episode go viral this is the content that really needs to be out there causing paradigm shifts impacting hearts and minds and for more of the show, please click on the link in the description of this episode. And we will send you a link to the private Facebook group where you get to interact with myself. The awesome guests you find here on the show. You also find show notes and links to the things that we would have spoken about here on the show. Till then, guys, I promise, promise to keep providing powerful and empowering content that will help you become the hero that you're meant to be. Guys, if you love this episode, please head over to SoundCloud and give us a rating to let everybody know that the show is awesome. Up until the next time, bye-bye.